Two minutes, please. Yeah, good evening. Uh, I'm a resident of Oakley, Oakley and Parish, Oakley and Dean Parish Council. Reiterate what the gentleman said, Mr Hodges, about the Oakley uh, service. It is uh, every hour now, it was every half an hour. Um, why it goes all the way through South Ham when they all really got the 4, 8 and the 3, I don't understand. It doesn't go past Morrison's, it doesn't go past the Doctors, it doesn't go past Beacot. Also, while I'm on it, uh, not the 11 so much, but the 8 goes straight into town after a certain time in the morning. So anyone who's at Buckskin can't even get to the top of the town. Uh, I used to be a bus driver for a stagecoach, and I can remember years ago, they had a 56 and a 50. The 56 used to go from the bus station to Sainsbury's, change number to 50, and come back down through Brighton Hill. Why can't they reinstate this service and we're the same again back the other way round? It's the same bus, it just changes numbers at Sainsbury's. It could even go round Beggarwood and still come back to town. Uh, the other thing One is... One minute, please. Yeah, the other thing is we do have a service on Sundays, which is 76, which I understand is operated by Hampshire County Council and Bays and Stoke and Dean. Uh, it comes from Andover. Why it comes from Andover, I'll never know. But it only goes to Whitchurch during the day, and then it goes returns back to Andover at the last service. Uh, it's because Basingstoke Borough actually pay for this service, I understand now, from a, a, a forum that I attended. The other thing is, um, if the people in Oakley don't use the service, they will lose it. There's a certain saying, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And that's what's happening. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. I come from the Hatch Warren area, and you've had most of the complaints that I have already. You've already had them from people with the Brighton Hill, and um, the number 12 and the number 8 are the only ones we get now. And the t number 12, as you've heard, is absolutely ridiculous because we can't get to Burton Hill without going into town and back again on the number one. And the same with everywhere else in town. It doesn't matter where you want to go, you've got to get on two buses. You've got to go into town and then out again. The number eight used to go along Worthing Road so we could get to Morrison's, the Technical College, the cemetery, places like that. We can't now unless we go into town and get the number three back again. It's the same with the doctor's surgery from Hatch Warren. It's moved to South Ham. Again, into town, number three back again. I often wonder whether the people that made up these routes have ever been on a bus because they definitely don't know their way around Basingstoke. I've lived here for 35 years and I have never known such lousy transport as we're now getting in Basingstoke. One minute, please. <laughs> Thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak, Mr Chairman. Bus services in Basingstoke. Uh, Mr Dyer, I believe, is here. The representative of which one's that? You. Right. I understand, of course, that you represent a commercial organisation whose only concern is profit. As we've heard from many other people, this is not a service. The particular bus route that I'm concerned with was if I've got this right, a number two, which became a number seven, which became a number 12, which has disappeared. Our main bus stops are between the roundabouts on the Hackwood Road. We were told when we found out about this, I found out One about this. I found out about it because I went to a bus stop and no buses came along. I had no notification beforehand. I also would point out at this time that uh, we sent a letter, my wife sent a letter to Peter Smith, Transport Officer, Bayes and Bean Borough Council, Stagecoach, Passenger Transport Group, 
HCC, Brian Gurdon, our councillor, HCC. We have had no response whatsoever. This indicates callous indifference to the burghers of Basingstoke. Um, we live approximately one mile from the town centre. The bus service, an alternative bus, via a different route at a considerably different um, <coughs> walking distance to arrive at, is obviously much longer. It's been reduced from the, shall I say, the number seven of one of those, which was a three an hour, not brilliant, um, to one an hour, and, as you've heard before, not on Sundays. But you're pretty, Are you you're concerned with this at all? I, I am certainly very concerned with it, but you've used your time, thanks. Right. Well, it. there is something I think I should say extra. In uh, arranging this meeting, and the way you have organised it, from a management and administration point of view, if you'd have called people up while the previous people were speaking, you could have given them, on a percentage basis, considerably more time to speak. <laughs> this operation is a disaster. And I would also say something else. My experience, my experience of buses have been RTs, RTLs, RMs, and trolley buses. I also have an experience of a 33 tram. I would say that the buses, many of the buses that are on these peoples that they supply are as bad as 33 tram. Mr. Lydia, certainly you, 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 you just move your time and there are other people waiting to speak. Well, they, if you'd have allocated and organised this properly, they'd have had much more time to speak. <laughs> Uh, Chris, Christine. I live in the Burg on Buckland Avenue, which used to have seven buses an hour, the number three and the number four, 4A. Now we have two buses an hour, the number 11 and the four, 4A. They go at either six minutes to the hour or 13 minutes past. If you miss one, you've got 40 minutes at least to wait. We have the same circumstances when we come back. The Burg has mostly elderly people. Quite frequently, the buses that we get are double-deckers, underused, with a bar down the middle of the doorway, steps, which are difficult to get on and off. You can't get a shopping trolley up there easily, and a buggy or a pram is very difficult. And the drivers are unable to give any assistance, which means if you've got shopping, baby in a pram, you have no chance. And with one bus an hour, You've got to wait another hour? I don't think that's fair. I have uh, corresponded via the email with Andrew Hawkshead of Stagecoach Southern, and I had a reply. When I said that there, they, he replied and saying there was a better service, modern travel pattern, and declining pattern of customers to change three, the rich as three, and that. It was done because they, uh, excuse me, were um, incurring penalty points for lateness. Now, I've watched many a number three come round with another one directly behind it. If a 10-minute service does that, that would suggest to me they should be not quite so frequently, and then people would be, they would be more fully occupied. I think the service is appalling. It certainly wouldn't encourage people. The routes go around the centre of the outskirts of all the estates and not in the middle. We have no Sunday service. It Thank makes life very difficult. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jerry Trainer now. Thank you. You'd think I ought to be used to this. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I won't keep it long. Um, I'm not representing anybody particularly, but I do wish to speak about the elderly. I'm a, a rather elderly myself. Um, I want to speak about one person. I won't give any name or who say what sex they are. But they got off the bus they were in Winchester Road to travel and walk up to uh, Hillview. Halfway up Hillview, they collapsed on the side of the road because we were carrying shopping. 
There is no buses, no number three buses up or down in in um, Hillview Road. South Ham and the Park is uh, uh, very commonly known as God's Prison Area because there is lots and lots of people like myself. Now I have made a few notes and I'll try to keep try to keep to to, to the point. Um, I said that about the now come to consultation. I don't remember one minute, please. I don't remember any consultation whatsoever for myself or any of my neighbours. I don't believe that the councillors received um, um, consultation either. If they did, I, I'm not aware. But I do think that the, the fact this has been run is an absolute hash. The, the guys that seem to be in charge, if I was their governor, they'd be looking for another job tomorrow. So I, I think that uh, um, the sooner we get um, this is pre nationalised, the better. Thank you, Chairman. Thank, thank you, Mr. Trainer. Two minutes, please. It won't be two minutes, I'm going to show you that. Uh, mine is more on a safety um, procedure. The coach bay next to the bus station, we were always led to believe that that was put there for National Express to use and other coaches because stage coach would not allow them to use their coach to, uh, bus station. I've now realised that the stage coach had put a bus stop in that bay and on a safety factor, I think it's deplorable because when you get a, a National Express, if there's two of them come in at the same time, one is then left out on the dual carriageway, traffic comes off the east, not round about at such a rate that I can see an accident going to happen any day now. And any other coach form, if there's two coaches coming in, the bus that is parked there is um, holding everybody up. Um, the organisation will say, I'm taking the air to the bank, so I can do the air 55 for them. We had um, two coaches going in there. One day, mm -hmm. this. Thank you very much. Um, we had um, to drop off elderly people in there uh, just recently, and there was a, a bus parked in there. And the driver went up and asked the stagecoach driver if he could move up. And the driver turned around and said, I'm here for another five minutes yet, that's it. And he didn't cooperate one bit. And I've already said to our stagecoach, in the uh, meetings that I've had with them in the last few months, that I think if our drivers were more available, more friendly to passengers, they'd get more passengers on their buses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merrick. Um, um, I just want to start off by saying that the biggest issue currently facing young people in Basingstoke is transport and more specifically buses. Um, since the changes have been put in last year, young people have issues getting to school, colleges, getting to and from leisure activities and from work. And if the buses do run, then they are very poor quality and a lot of the times they don't even turn up. Um, exactly one year ago a lot of consultations were taken by the council um, about young people's transport issues and I believe they were directly fed back but a year later I stand here and ask what has been done about this in fact now that more changes are going to be taking place I think this will have a really significant impact on um, people from a wide range of the spectrum and um, especially on the lives of young people so thank you Thank you very much for time. Yeah. Do we have another Mr. 